Hey there, Philip here from Manning the Fort, and today I want to tell you about a few things I've purchased in the last year or so that have really helped me improve my painting game. If you've uh, watched the channel for a while, you might know that I don't consider myself by any means the best painter in the world. I'm someone who started taking painting more seriously back in 2020, uh, during the pandemic in particular, and decided to hone my skill set. But I realized at one point that my equipment was kind of holding me back, so I started looking around for things that were of a little bit higher quality, and that's what I'm going to show you today. Let's start with brushes. These are a couple of the ones I use pretty regularly now, but in the past I would use either cheap Mega Pack hobby brushes or the overpriced synthetics that you get from companies like Army Painter and Games Workshop. And I noticed that not only were the bristles on the brushes fraying pretty darn frequently on all of those brushes, but I wasn't getting the kind of precision and control that I felt like I should be able to given all the YouTube videos I was watching from people like Vince Venturella and Squidmar and Miniac. Eventually I realized that it might be my tools that were in part holding me back as well as an experience, but I decided to make the jump and buy this. This is a sable hairbrush. Specifically, it is a Da Vinci Maestro Series 10 Size 2. Uh, it's the very first nice brush that I bought, and it was an immediate game changer for me. Uh, things like glazing and wet blending and all of that became so much easier because of some of the properties of this brush. It's got, for its size, it's got a much bigger belly than you would find on a lot of the cheaper synthetics or the more expensive synthetics. And so each time you go to the palette, it holds more paint. It also uh, held a, a good tip for a long time. It's starting to lose that a little bit now, but it was, uh, it got abused quite a bit as my daily driver painting probably 70, 80 miniatures or more over the course of a year or so. And early on, especially, I wasn't taking the best care of it. Now, one of the big questions I see when people are looking at getting into sable brushes is which ones do I buy? And uh, you will find as many opinions on that as you will find miniature painters who use them. For a long time, the go-to recommendation was the Winsor & Newton Series 7. Now, I don't own a Winsor & Newton Series 7, and given what I've heard in the last year or so, I don't think I'm going to be buying one. Uh, for a long time, people swore by them, said they were the best brush for the money on the market, but recently people have been having terrible experiences, like the bristles splitting as soon as they started using them and that sort of thing, the kind of stuff that, that never happened with my Da Vinci. Uh, so I would avoid those. Like I said, I, the Da Vinci Maestro um, Series 10, I believe Trovarian was the one who recommended this. Uh, and that's why I went and got that one. Uh, but I'll tell you, my daily drivers these days are the Monument Hobbies Pro Series Sable Brushes. And I think they actually make a really good starting point for someone getting into sable brushes because they avoid the biggest pitfall, which is price tag. Um, you know, sable brushes, like I think this Da Vinci Maestro cost me probably $15 when I bought it new. And if you buy some of the other ones, they can get even more expensive. Um, the Monument Hobbies ones, I got gifted a Sam Lens weapon rack, which had uh, three sable brushes as well as two large synthetic brushes. And that whole set goes for 50 bucks, which for nice brushes is a pretty good price point. And I got these at the end of September. It's the beginning of January now. So I've only been using them a few months, but they're absolutely my daily drivers. And as long as I keep you know, keep them in good shape. They've done me really well, hold their points, all that good stuff. Uh, another brand that I've never heard anyone complain about actually is the Raphael 8404 series. Now those are going to be pricier. Anytime I found them online, it's minimum 25, 30 bucks a brush. But, um, you know, people say they last a long time when you take care of them and that they have really good quality, hold a good tip, have a nice big belly, like I said, so you're going to the palette less often, it makes it easier for you to draw straight lines, to do edge highlighting, to do wet blending, that sort of stuff. All of these things um, are real positives to sable brushes. Now, all that said, I know there are some people who, for whatever personal reasons, don't want to use natural hair brushes, and I get it. That's fine. Um, but like I said, that set that I got from Monument actually came with two of these size 6 Pro Series synthetics. And for synthetics, I've been very impressed with that line as well. So I'd 
recommend giving those a shot. Um, they actually just recently released, I think, a new line of Pro Series synthetics with Uncle Adam's name from Tabletop Minions on them. Um, so they sell those as a set, and there's usually a little bit of a discount involved there. And it's only three brushes, so it should, shouldn't run you all that much money. And it should be said that buying good brushes isn't going to make you a better painter, but what it will do is it will stop inferior quality tools from holding you back. Now, if you do decide to go ahead and take the plunge into sable brushes, I highly recommend picking up some of this. This is the Masters Brush Cleaner and Conditioner. There will be an affiliate link down below from Amazon where you can pick this up, and I'll get a little bit of a kickback to the channel. But this is uh, some stuff you just kind of shape the brush in that. You wet the brush, shape it around in here, rinse it off, and then I actually brush it back in and leave it in in a point. Uh, so that next time I come back, the brush is nice and ready. As soon as I rinse the rest of that conditioner out, it's ready to go. And it served me really well, and it extends the life of your brushes. Uh, Squidmar actually has a really good video on caring for sable brushes. So if you're going to get sables, plan on getting some of this. It's pretty cheap. This tub cost me less than 10 bucks, and I've used it a ton over the last year or so. And it's there's still tons left in here. The next tool I want to talk about is the wet palette. Here's mine. Uh, I've got to be a little bit careful with it because it does in fact have water in it right now, so I don't want to tip it over, but you can probably see on the top there, it gets plenty of use. In fact, there's a little bit of oil paint residue on there, I think. But anyway, let's talk about why a wet palette is a good investment for someone trying to up their game as a painter. Uh, the first thing is it maintains a semi-wet surface. So when you put paint on there, it stays wet for a long time, hours, even days. I've left that thing for a couple of days and come back and the paint on it is still entirely usable. Another good thing about wet palettes is it makes things like mixing and blending colors easier. They just tend to flow a little bit better. It's just an all around good purchase and an inexpensive one. Uh, you can go all the way up to spending $50 or maybe even more at this point on a wet palette, but I don't recommend it. Uh, you can also make your own with a Tupperware and some sponges, and I did that uh, for a while, but I, I think it is worth spending a few bucks and actually getting a purpose-made one. Uh, this one is the Masterson's Stay Wet palette, and it's uh, the one I have is, a small, is the smaller one, and it costs about 10 bucks on Amazon as well. Again, affiliate link below. One thing I will say, if you buy something like the Masterson's palette, and I think a lot of the other fine art wet palettes out there, is it's going to come with some paper. That paper is not for us. That paper is for artists using heavy body acrylics on canvas and other things like that. Uh, for us, the best thing to use is just some parchment paper, or if you're outside the U.S., I believe it's called baking paper, but it's semi-porous, so it allows a little bit of that moisture to come through and keep the paint wet, but it keeps the paint from seeping back through it and into the rest of the palette. Now, as much as I love my wet palette, there are a couple of things in particular that I don't put on there. Um, one, if you've seen my oil wash videos, do not put an oil wash on there. Uh, but for acrylics, I, I don't put things like this, Vallejo Metal Color paint on there. I love Vallejo Metal Color, but it's very runny, um, and it just doesn't do well on the wet palette. It separates really easily and can get into the water, and then that can get onto the rest of your paint. Um, same is kind of true for acrylic ink. If you've watched many of my videos, you know I'm a big fan of acrylic ink for painting miniatures, but probably not the best for the wet palette in a lot of circumstances. Finally, we have the airbrush. Now, this is one that gets recommended a lot, but people are kind of oddly resistant to buying for various and sundry reasons. And I get it. I mean, so was I. But now that I have one, I kind of wonder how I ever got anything done without it. Uh, and here's the thing about airbrushes. They're not cheap. This is a Badger Patriot 105. It's kind of my workhorse. I use it for priming, for base coating, for that sort of thing. I didn't start with the Badger or with my GSI airbrush. Uh, I started with a $99 kit from Amazon. In fact, the exact kit is in an affiliate link below. And I recommend starting with something cheap. It's, it's advice that I got from Vince Venturella, who suggested buying, I think, the exact same kit that I ended up getting. And the reason for that is if you go out and you spend a lot of money on an airbrush, 
you're going to be scared to use it. I know I would have been. I mean, the Badger Patriot isn't super expensive. You know, just the body of this you can usually find on sale for about 80 bucks or so. But I think buying a replacement master airbrush for the kit that I got was less than $30, which is a good thing because airbrushes are very sensitive, highly engineered pieces of equipment. And there's lots of fiddly little threads and different things. And the needles are very thin and very easy to bend. So it's easy to mess them up. And if you've got a $200 Iwata or Harder and Steenbeck, which are great airbrushes, then if it were me, I probably never would have picked the thing up in the first place. But if I've got, you know, a cheap, cheaply Chinese made off brand, then yeah, I'll go nuts with it. And I learned a lot from using that master airbrush. I, I don't use it anymore. It's just off camera here, but I still use the compressor. So if your budget for getting into airbrushing is over $100, then I wouldn't necessarily buy a more expensive airbrush, but maybe consider getting an air compressor with a tank on it, um, just so there's a little bit less compressor noise while you're working. That is probably the next thing I'll upgrade on my setup. Once you are ready to upgrade your airbrush, it's kind of similar to sable brushes in that people get very factional about what brands of airbrush they use. Uh, like I mentioned, for a lot of tasks, I use the Badger Patriot 105. Uh, I like to refer to it as the AK-47 of airbrushes. It's not the most accurate thing in the universe, and sometimes it sprays a little bit faster than you're anticipating until you get used to the trigger discipline, but it's very rugged, it's very durable, and if you're in the United States especially, replacement parts are pretty inexpensive because they're made here in America. The other airbrush I have that I use for more detail work is this, and it's got an insanely long name. It's the GSI Creos Mr. Airbrush Procon Boy 270 0. Millimeter Pro Platinum. I think that's it. Anyway, it's uh, it's got a 0. 0.2 millimeter needle, as the name implies, and it's it's better than the Badger for some of the close-up work and fine detail and some of that stuff that I like to use for uh, use airbrushes for at times. But there are a lot of other great airbrush brands out there. You have people who will swear by Iwata or Harder and Steenbeck or Grex. Uh, if you're looking for something more mid-range, Sparmax makes some really good ones from what I hear. I've never used one. But do your research and see which one's going to be best for you. You can usually find something like the Badger Patriot, like I said, for about 80 bucks on eBay or Amazon. But if you're really interested in browsing a wide array, I'd recommend checking out a site like Spraygunner.com. Uh, Spray Gunner's got a really wide range of things that they sell, and they'll occasionally sell refurbished models at a bit of a discount. They completely take them apart, clean them, put them back together, certify them, the whole deal. In fact, that's where I got that GSI brush from a little under a year ago, and it's been perfect for me. With all that said, again, buying tools like this are not going to make you a better painter, but they will allow you to be a better painter. When you're using cheap synthetic brushes, they're great for a lot of things. I, I still have, I still buy mega packs of cheap nylon brushes for oil washes and some metallics or things that are very runny and I don't want the paint to get into the ferrule of my good brushes, stuff like that. But when it comes to the real detail work and that sort of stuff, you know, it, you really can't beat a good set of tools and supplies. Uh, hopefully that's been helpful. If you've got any questions about any sort of brands or anything else, uh, you can leave a comment down below. Uh, also, this is the first video I've shot that's mostly direct to camera, so hopefully uh, you're not sick of my face yet. I'm sure I would be if I were on your side of things. Also, if there are other things that you would recommend, feel free to let others know down in the comments as well. There's plenty of other stuff that I use on a day-to-day, -day, but with this being the new year and people setting you know, resolutions for themselves and painting goals for the year, that sort of thing, I just wanted to give my two cents on the things that have helped me progress over the last year and a half or so. If you want to see how I use some of these tools, there's a link on screen right now to my entire hobby tutorial playlist. And uh, until next time, remember, it's just paint.